Hello everyone and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In this tutorial, we will walk through the steps required to set up a new Android tablet. Our tablet is running Android OS 8.1, although the steps are broadly similar across recent versions of Android. If you haven't set up a tablet before, hopefully you'll find these steps very straightforward. Having pressed the power button and allowed the machine to progress through its startup sequence, we reach the language selection screen. We were fortunate that our test device emerged fully charged from the box, as shown by the charge indicator. We're running low on battery, plug in using the provided adapter before proceeding. Whilst US English is often accepted as the default, UK users should scroll down to select English before selecting United Kingdom from the suggested options for better localization. Android supports a great many other languages if your requirement is for something other than English, and we can scroll through the extensive list to make our selection. With our chosen language selected, tap Start to proceed. Our setup screens are taken from an Acer Iconia 1 B3 A50 tablet, and this legal screen will only apply on Acer devices. Your device manufacturer may have inserted a similar screen, or may omit it entirely. We can review the full terms by scrolling through them, should we wish to do so. As always, acceptance of the license conditions is compulsory, and we indicate our consent by ticking the relevant box. With the tick applied, the option to progress is now available to us, and we tap next to proceed. We now arrive at the Wi-Fi connection screen, and the device has begun its search for nearby networks. Once the scan is complete, we should see a list of available Wi-Fi networks ranked from top to bottom in order of signal strength. Under normal conditions, our network should be near the top of the list, although we can scroll down to see all available options. If we cannot see our network, check that the router is switched on and broadcasting a signal, using another device if one is available. Secure networks, which require a password to join, are indicated with a padlock. Our TFF network is at the top of our list, so we click to join the network. Our network is secured with a password, which we are now required to enter, using the on-screen keyboard which has appeared. Be aware that passwords are case sensitive, and we can change case using the shift key, as well as accessing symbols using the special characters key. The default network name and password may be printed on the router itself, although they may well have been changed by the person who initially set up the network. If the defaults fail, seek advice from that person. With the password successfully entered, our device is shown to be obtaining an IP address, which means that it's connecting to the network. Once the device is shown to be checking for updates, we can be confident that a connection to the network has been established, and we can allow this screen to progress without input from us. If you have data from an existing device, you may wish to copy it using this option. If this is your first device, this will not apply to you. Typically, we apply a clean slate for all of our installations, so we decline this option. Having declined, the device will now briefly proceed without further input, before arriving at the Google sign-in screen. If you have logged into Google services in the past, such as the Google Play Store, Gmail or YouTube, you can use the same account details on this device by signing in with the same username and password which you have used for those services. Alternatively, you can create a new account. You may also wish to review our tutorial Creating a Gmail Account, which shows the account creation process on a Windows PC. We opt to use the login created during that tutorial and tap on the box labelled Email or Phone. The on-screen keyboard once again appears to enable us to enter the email address of our Google account, which we do before tapping the Enter button to proceed. Now we enter the password associated with our Google account and again tap Enter. Once again, we are required to accept terms of service, this time those published by Google, in order to use Google services on this device. Again, given that Google services are integral to an Android device, the only realistic option is to accept by tapping I agree. Again, we temporarily rest as the device deals with the request and processes our account information, with one final pause. Now we reach a screen which allows us to add a lock screen to the device to prevent unauthorised access. We could opt to leave the device unlocked, or add a password or PIN for the device, or draw a pattern to unlock. As password and PIN options are self-explanatory, we will opt for a pattern lock, although you should exercise your own preference here. 
We also opt to enable secure startup to protect data in the event that our device is lost or stolen. This will require us to enter the pattern whenever we start up the device. Note that Android is still very much seen as an operating system for phones by reference to receiving calls, which of course we will not be doing, at least in the traditional sense, on this tablet. Now we have free choice to create a pattern joining the dots which we will use in future to unlock our tablet. Having drawn our choice of pattern, we tap next to confirm. We are invited to redraw the pattern to ensure that it has been correctly depicted. Once done, we again tap confirm. Locking options can be changed once device setup has been complete. Google Assistant now introduces itself and we can tap next here to proceed. In order to interact with Google Assistant, a small voice sample of two phrases, each repeated once, is required. Alternatively, we can opt to skip. Assuming we proceed, we are now simply required to say the phrases in sequence. Once completed, we will automatically move to the second, third and final voice sample. Now that voice matching has concluded, we can unlock our device using our voice. Note again that Android is geared towards use on a phone rather than a tablet, as is made evident during this part of the setup process. The next sequence of screens addresses control of our privacy options and the data which we may or may not be prepared to share with Google in exchange for use of its services. As this tutorial is focused upon device setup rather than data security, we will not systematically review each of the options presented here and enabled by default. We will simply draw attention to the options available and remind you that each of these options can be enabled or disabled during this initial setup and that those options can be reconfigured at any time after setup has concluded. We would further advise everyone to read and consider their own privacy preferences carefully and select a level of data security which suits their needs, striking a balance between usability of features and disclosure of personal data. Once we have reviewed our privacy options and indicated our obligatory agreement, we can add a further email account, configure lock screen information or review additional apps. We can also skip these steps now and perform them later should we so wish. We opt to set up an additional email and note that the major services can be quickly configured. We select Yahoo and sign in using the details created during our tutorial create an email account with Gmail and Yahoo Mail. Once again we briefly wait as our device is configured before we are finally advised that we have completed the setup and the device is ready to use. Again this is an Acer branded screen which may have a different or indeed absent equivalent upon your device. The notice that some apps may still be completing installation over your Wi-Fi connection is valuable as we progress to the home screen where we see that in the immediate aftermath of setup a further 11 applications are in the process of updating over Wi-Fi. This number will vary by device and although you will be keen to test your new tablet you should allow these updates to install for optimal performance and system stability. We finally reach the home screen. Yours may look different due to the wallpaper and selection of apps installed by the device manufacturer. As the download icon indicates, our device is still updating at this stage. And dragging down from the top of the screen clearly shows that updating remains in progress. With two active download indicators, we are aware that the tablet is working hard to update and we don't add to its workload by running additional apps as these final setup tasks take place. We do, however, Use the opportunity to review apps installed by default by moving to the device's additional home pages by swiping from right to left. Having allowed the tablet sufficient time to update, we note that 10 out of 11 applications have installed, with one failure. We also note that 22 of our Google Play Store apps have available updates, although we will momentarily disregard that. With a view to rectifying the failed application, we turn the device off and on again, and are greeted by the setup completion screen where we tap start to proceed. There is a further check for updates. Again, we return to the option to import data and again we decline by selecting don't copy. We are offered two further personalization options, which again can be adjusted once setup has concluded. We examine our wallpaper options and note the various options available to us before clicking back to conclude the setup without changing the wallpaper. Setup completes with the reset prompting the successful installation of the final application. 
And now we view our home screen with the setup process complete. We now return to the 22 Google Play Store apps requiring our attention and run the Google Play Store app. Using the main menu on the left, we navigate to the My Apps and Games section where we note that there are 22 updates pending and we scroll through them. We can either update them individually by clicking on the update icon to the right of the specific app or update them all by returning to the top of the page and selecting update all. Again, set aside a few minutes if you choose to update in this way. Once these updates are complete, you can begin to fully explore your new device. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the TechFix Flix YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official TechFixFlix Twitter account. Until your next TechFix, goodbye.